Mr. Manager. So, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Anthony Romanello and Andrew Newby have this next component. And, you know, this is again the reason that we do these annual retreats is to move some ideas forward. Anthony has come forward with some exceptional ideas that have uh, also, uh, Mr. Hint, I believe, uh, our attorney's office have also been involved in. Uh, technology zone conversations. I know uh, Carrie Turkina has been involved in lab space. So he's got something that he wants to share with the board. I'm not going to steal any of your thunder, but I think it is, from my perspective, what you're doing uh, with these proposals is another reason that we continue to succeed on the commercial side. Thank you, Mr. Manager, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Good morning. Just want to talk with you for. A few minutes this morning about an opportunity for us here in Henrico with respect to research and development and wet lab space. I'm particularly honored to be uh, the opening act for your new county attorney. Follow the next. The Greater Richmond Bioscience Advantage. We have a substantial bioscience presence here in Greater Richmond and certainly here in Henrico. As you can see on the slide, many, many uh, companies, businesses that do work in the bioscience space here in the greater Richmond area, about 650 of them, and the eighth largest concentration of doctoral scientists and engineers uh, in the nation. We can credit uh, ECU and our higher education institutions in particular for, uh, for that. Some key research and development companies in the county, you would be familiar with a number of these names, Clinical Research Partners, which is right in the middle of the trenches with testing the virus, particularly uh, testing the vaccine, I should say, particularly with uh, children, clinic, children's clinical testing. Uh, Jeanette Works, which is in the old uh, Innsbruck Library, an expanding company here in, in RICO. And one of the uh, major expansion, R&D expansions, is uh, PPD, which we know is in the Westwood area. They were bought out recently by a company called Thermo Fisher Scientific, which is headquartered just outside of Boston. Thermo Fisher is a $40 billion life sciences company, so they're bringing additional capital and we think we'll see even greater things from uh, PPD, which will uh, soon be known as Thermo Fisher Scientific. Speak to you about the demand for lab space and the opportunity that we think we have here in Henrico. Over the last couple of calendar years, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership has re received requests for nearly a million square feet of lab space in the GRP region and the four locality region statewide. BDP receives requests for about 100,000 square feet of wet lab space each month. There is nearly no product available in the greater Richmond area, nearly no product available in the Commonwealth of Virginia. There's a little bit at Biotech 8 at the Biotech Biotechnology Research Park in downtown Richmond, but that is currently in the process of being leased. Here's the challenge. To build lab space, it can be at least $400 a square foot, and depending on the nature of the product and the nature of <clears throat> what is being tested, it can be over $1,200 a square foot. So it becomes very difficult for developers, architects, engineers, property owners to take the risk with a, such a high basis for speculative lab space. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, Virginia Biotech Research Park does have some limited space for lease as well as two additional parcels that are currently being considered uh, for development. So we believe here in Henrico that we are well positioned to grow. So we've begun an initiative talking with engineers, architects, real estate investment trust, or REITs, talking with local contractors and developers also to figure out what we can do to take advantage of this great demand and really position Henrico to continue to succeed. We're working very closely with the efforts both supported by Go Virginia through the advanced pharmaceutical manufacturing hub effort that's being championed by Activation Capital, as well as Virginia BioConnect, which is a workforce development effort in the life sciences. One of uh, our areas of focus is to conduct a viability assessment for an R&D uh, shell building or what they call a framework building. And the idea behind that would be a typical industrial shell building would be a roof and walls, basically. With a shell building for lab space, you would have additional HVAC. You would have additional water and sewer uh, capacity built into the building. You would still allow the, uh, the tenants to come in and finish it to their needs, but you would build into the base of the building or into the shell building the additional, uh, more robust uh, infrastructure so that they're 
closer to being ready uh, to build when they come in there. The other thing I didn't mention is power. They also can be substantial electric power users there. We've considered some options in working with the Economic Development Authority Board about potentially a lease out at White Oak Technology Park and trying to figure out, we're working with the county attorney's office now, how we can uh, maybe enter into a partnership with a preferred uh, private partner to help us move the needle on this and, and potentially have some shared risk, again, to take advantage uh, of this opportunity. Another, I'm sorry, sir. I, I want the board to understand this has never been undertaken before by the meeting, by the county, but there's an opportunity here to emerging the field with lab space. And so we've had some success, Anthony noted, with your networks. We've had incredible success with PPD. But, you know, we're a beacon. And the opportunity, as you noted, from VEDP is out there. So the speculation comes about and that the EDA uh, would be a partner somehow in a venture. And I don't want to, I wanted to take that that time so the board could understand that, you know, this is something that has not been done before, but we think the upside is significant. Yeah, I can ask this, is it PPE that took over the building, the former Toys R Us building? Mm -hmm. PP, PPD is, uh, PP, it's PPD, Pharmaceutical Products Development, ma'am. Uh, I will tell you there in expansion mode, the, uh, the new tenant at Toys R Us has yet to be announced. Oh. Um, but, but it will be, it will be a, uh, <laughs> but no, in, in fact, there's a piece on the next slide, ma'am. You're exactly right. That, that, that building is a great example of how we can repurpose big box, re, big box, big box retail for R and D. But we do have sufficient uh, water capacity. That's for certain. I do know that in the county. I mean, generally. Oh yes, ma'am. We certainly have the water capacity for. We we provided the water capacity for chip manufacturing right. plant. So that's why we expanded it. And then when they left, now I do want to. That's why I mentioned that because uh, the first. Um, retreat we went on it that to my recollection of course when it was january of 1996 was to austin texas to visit the chip manufacturing process and in doing that we saw that we needed to expand our water capacity tremendously i think it was at least five million gallons a day more than we had even considered so are we we are you're going to tell us about we're okay with their water capacity at this point but that that's what I'm getting at. We we set it all up to do chip manufacturing, and so now we're going to move toward something else, R and D and the, we, pharmaceuticals. I, I would say both, ma'am, and and not just not just at White Oak, but but throughout the county. In, in the R and D space, you're there. What we're talking about is going to be more in the neighborhood of fifteen thousand, fifty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand square feet. We anticipate, and this is part of the work we're doing with with the uh, with folks at Activation Capital. We do anticipate that there could also be some co-location of R and D space with pharmaceutical manufacturing. We're very well positioned at the White Oak Technology Park to take advantage of pharmaceutical manufacturing because we have sites that are ready for development, and because of the infrastructure investment that the Board of Supervisors made 25 years ago. You're, you're exactly right. We have 10 million gallons of water capacity and similar sewer capacity out at White Oak. So we, we are well positioned there for advanced manufacturing, uh, whether it's uh, chips, pharmaceutical, or any other any other uh, kind of manufacturing. The, the one challenge that we, we do have, since you, you mentioned the chips, ma'am, is that the, the current uh, strategy, what you saw with the most recent Intel announcement, is the chip companies are looking for a thousand acres or more and they want a flat rectangle. And that becomes a very big challenge. That's a big challenge throughout Virginia to have the, the infrastructure capacity as well as a thousand acre flat rectangle. And so that's uh, part of the reason why they ended up, uh, why, the, why the Intel plan ended up out in Ohio. A billion dollars of incentives didn't hurt too. Uh, the, uh, so as we work through uh, these opportunities, uh, one of the other things that we wanted to ask the board to uh, consider as part of your bu budget process is creating a separate category under business personal property for research and development. This is allowed under Virginia law. It would be very similar to what the board did in 2017 with the data center tax rate. 
just want to mention some opportunities we have in the county. Here's some potential examples for space that can be converted to lab. Our friends at DPR, they're headquartered out in Innsbruck. As you know, they're building the Facebook data center out at White Oak. They've done a white paper on converting office space into laboratories. 2240 Dabney Road, which is the top right, that's a PPD building. Certainly the best products building at, at Green City would be a good alternative for conversion. 5600 Cox Road, which is at the back of Innsbruck, would also be a potential building for conversion. And then as was mentioned earlier, 8700 Cuyacasin is under conversion uh, as we speak into uh, lab space. The board has seen this chart before. This is just validation of your efforts over the last five years as you've lowered business taxes, the business community has responded with substantial investments. And you can see the private investment for M&T increasing 78%, data center investment increase, increasing 2,600%, B-Pole is up 20%, and all business personal property about 78%. So the Board of Supervisors strategy of lowering the tax burden on businesses to encourage private investment continues to work, and we believe that this all could also could be the case with respect to the business personal property on R&D. Yes, ma'am. I do know there's some legislation at the General Assembly to do away with the B-Pole tax. Yes, ma'am. That seems to be an annual proposal. Mm -hmm. All right. Saw that point it out. Thank you. Here's where we are relative to the 10 largest localities in Virginia. Our business personal property rate for R&D is about $3.50. We're just above the average, and you can see it ranges from Prince William and Chesterfield at a dollar all the way up to Arlington County at uh, $5. So our recommendation today would be as part of the board's consideration of the FY23 budget to establish a separate category under the county code for research and development, business personal property for research and development and to lower the levy uh, through certainly the financial wherewithal to get it to a uh, dollar would be great. So we're uh, right in line with the other, with Prince William and Chesterfield is among the lowest in Virginia and certainly the lowest among the 10 largest uh, localities. I should also mention it was on a previous slide. One of the other tools that we have in helping to grow the R&D ecosystem in Henrico is the action that the board has taken on enterprise zones, on the, the new HIP zones, and then Mr. Newby will speak here in a minute about some thoughts uh, that we have in, in uh, partnering with the county on uh, technology zones, which could also potentially help uh, move the needle in this area. And Madam Chairman, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Members of the board. I've got one. Um, thank you for looking at Innsbruck yes. for, for the for the R&D, because that that's as soon as you started, I was like, good God, we've got to be offices in Innsbruck that need to be filled this yes, year. Um, and you had what three three different locations in Innsbruck that, that, that could satisfy that, especially with the flat older buildings. Um, if we are going to look at R and D tax rate, can we compare whatever we first come up with to get closer to compete with Prince William and Chesterfield, and then look at 98 cents and see if there would be that much of a difference. Because if we're going to do it and we're going to be competitive, uh, we're definitely going to kick Prince William and Chesterfield out of the box. So this is exactly the type of feedback that we're looking for from these kind of conversations. I mean, the tax rate uh, uh, introduction, Mr. Newby, uh, those papers are introduced. Um, is it the end of February or is it March with the budget? They're being drafted now, Mr. Manager. Uh, the intent would be to advertise proposed tax rates in mid-March, so we need to have that ad ready early March. So if we're going to propose a lower tax rate, uh, that would be included in the ad and then come forward uh, to the board for consideration. With the so I'm going to ask for the, Madam Chair, if you would um, ask for uh, concurrence on Mr. Brannon's a proposal because this would be the time to do so. Yeah, you want to go over it one more time? Just oh, do you want me to go over it or the manager? <laughs> Please, my request. Um, in 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 regards to R and D tax rate, as we prepare where the county will go, uh, can we uh, compare to be competitive uh, the equal dollar rate and and look 
to a 90, 98 cent or even 96 if possible to, to see. So we are actually, as we usually are, the, the leader in the area and more competitive than everybody else. Did you propose you propose 98 based upon the suggestion of a dollar? Yeah, well, no, they didn't. They didn't actually recommend a dollar. They, did they? They just said uh, oh, Prince William and Chesterfield is the lowest at a dollar. And and if we're going to look to be competitive with them, I would want to be comp more competitive than them in bringing future business in and bring it down to 98 was my first flush, but it, it, 95, maybe 96. 95, 96 would be. So I mean, just something that makes, you know, 98 and a dollar. You're right there. That's right. So if we're gonna if we're gonna go go big, right? Go no small. This is exactly the type of feedback that we're looking for. So we will bring you a proposal that would be less than a dollar in the uh, budget proposal. And we're, we don't vote on it. I'm just saying, does anybody else have a comment? Just going to get my comment will be I, I concur. Uh, I'd like, I'm, I'm just assuming you can put a financial analysis together for us, right? You know, what the differences are, what it means, yeah. where it is now, where it is then, and what that means. That's awesome. So, anywhere from 25 cents to <laughs> 95 <laughs> cents, whatever it works the best. So, let me, let me, so the financial analysis at a dollar would cost the county about a million and a half dollars because there are existing businesses that will benefit from the reduction. So the million and a half dollars we have factored in already as far as uh, early balancing with uh, uh, with finance. So going from a dollar then to 98 or 95 is almost immaterial as far as the increment. We can absolutely do it. And Anthony, if you would go back to the slide that shows sure. the tax rate reductions. Because this is so this strategy has worked so well for the Board of Supervisors. And it, you know, you're looking at other localities now. I know in Northern Virginia that are looking at not just they're looking at increasing real estate tax rates at times where assessments are going up by 10, 12, 15 percent. So if there's concurrence with the board, we'll put this in play. But Anthony also asked for, are you okay with the EDA and the county continuing to work on? The, um, the spec building aspect where the county would go in and he's acquired uh, quite a bit of, uh, of revenue from land sales at, at White Oak Technology Park. He's done a wonderful job as far as managing the fiscal side of the EDA budget and he's built up reserves and the county has reserves. So there may be an opportunity to also do something in that realm that we would then bring you a finished product in a work session. But we're looking for general concurrence. Yes, no, don't do that, do that. Question real quick. Business property, business personal property data center rate lowered from 350 to 40 cent, 2017. Before the tax rate, we were bringing in 20 million, is what I'm saying? That was it. Tax year 2021, 549 million. But Reverend Nelson, that uh, that twenty million is the value, the, the assessed value of the data center equipment. Oh, okay. It's now uh, five hundred and forty-nine million of assessed value. Our data center taxes in the county ta direct tax revenue in the county was two million dollars in twenty seventeen. It was eight million dollars last year. So in this regard, a one point five million dollar financial analysis investment looks to reap the benefits down the road with increase. That's a perfect strategy. Yes. I totally agree with that. And then to answer your question, and you want to prime the pump on these bank buildings by using existing revenues and, and getting to getting them ready for potential use, making it easier for somebody to use. Yes, sir. Exactly. And what what was what was the square footage that that potential large uh, lease companies would be looking for? Mr. Brown, and we, we continue to have those conversations. What, what I would like to see, at least what's pointing to us right now, if we were to do a spec building or even that, that shell or framework building would probably be in 100,000 square foot range. So probably with multiple tenants. Okay. I, I would have thought. 
bringing a larger number at the work session where we still have those conversations. So I got some square feet, but if, if you're looking at multiple tenants, we get eaten up so fast yeah. that you could be. And we, we've we've done this before. Look at look, we build a building and then say, damn, if we had only gone a little bit bigger east, the east center, it should have been made bigger and been able to go up, but we didn't. And now they're busting at the seams. If we're going to do this to bring someone in, the needs there. You're showing us the needs there. So I would. I, I wouldn't limit yourself. I'd have conversation on if we went 150, if we went 200. We'll do. Thank you, Dean Bird. I think both initiatives on the surface make good economic strategy. Mm -hmm. um, I concur with both. Any other feedback? I'll find it. Okay. okay. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, members of board, Andrew Newby is also going to present concept technology zones. This is uh, legislation that has existed for a number of years. We're looking at doing something a little different with it, starting off with a focus on uh, Innsbruck, if you will, and then perhaps seeing how uh, and what success comes about. Andrew, if you want to kick us off. Thank you, sir. Madam Chairman, members of the board, I'm thrilled to be able to follow Anthony and present this piece on technology zones. This is something that staff's been working on, kicking around, looking for the right place in the right time for over a decade. We think now is the time. The ask of the board today is I'm going to present a vision, kind of an outline of where we'd like to go, the possibility of bringing it forward this spring, and then receiving feedback that the board would like, to, like for us to do that, both at Innsbruck and anywhere else the board wanted to see us do this. This is an idea so exciting. I have two cover pages. So this is the right tool, the right place at the right time. So we're looking to develop a technology zone at Innsbruck to, I like to use the term, put up a bat signal, put up a beacon, whatever you'd like to do, to call specific businesses, specific kinds of redevelopment to Innsbruck. And to see the right balance of development at Innsbruck. We all know that multifamily is hot out at Innsbruck. It needs no incentivizing. It's there. We're trying to create a community where it's live, work, play, so the live is taken care of. Can we bring balance? Can we incentivize additional balance by emphasizing the work piece to the tech zone? And we think the answer is yes. But actually, before I get to that, notice that when I'm talking about Innsbruck, staff would recommend that we don't do just the typical, what you think of as Innsbruck along Cox Road, but actually go all the way south of Broad so that we capture buildings like the SunTrust Center, which I'm about to show off. Okay, Mr. Newby? Yes, sir. Um, the Innsbruck study was done I think before you were here, and we expanded the Innsbruck area from 264 all the way through uh, west here. Yeah, it, I believe these are the exact same boundaries. This is the census designated place, which I believe uh, uh, coincides with the overlay district. So, yes, sir. So, that would be the idea is to go uh, the full Innsbruck area as we define it now. And the reason is because the south of Broad, you do have tremendous opportunities to reimagine uh, all the space that exists at the SunTrust Center. I'll show on these slides. So that's the vision. Do a technology zone in Innsbruck, put up the bat signal, attract specific businesses there through incentives. And so let me get to the legal nuts and bolts of what that is. What is a technology zone? It's a creature of state law. We were created by ordinance, which you're familiar with the process of doing that. You would set specific incentives for the designated area with the idea of promoting economic development. And really, the ordinance is a fairly simple creature. We have to come up with the who, the what, the where, and the when. So we need to come up with qualifications. That's where uh, Mr. Romanello and I and the rest of staff would really be coming together to decide what businesses, what level of investment, what level of job creation do we want to incentivize at Innsbruck. Uh, or any other zone that we end up creating. And then what incentives? And I'll drill down to each of these in just a moment. And then the specific areas of the duration. So let's keep moving quickly. On qualifications, the goal is to promote balance, particularly in Innsbruck. And state law is incredibly flexible. You see this name technology zone. It's not limited to technology businesses. We have the opportunity to define exactly the kinds of businesses we want to target. 
and exactly the kind of redevelopment we want to target so that we can restore that balance to make sure that we're looking at particular sectors and not incentivizing things that don't need incentivizing. You know, there's plenty of um, incentive already to do multifamily, as I've mentioned, but there's a demand, as Mr. Romanella pointed out, for lab space. And there's a gap <laughs> between uh, our available inventory and that demand, and we need to find a way to bridge it. Uh, this could be another way to bridge that gap is by throwing up a technology zone, targeting specific businesses, whether it's corporate headquarters, the financial insurance sectors, professional creative services, or the lab space, health life science services. You really target the kinds of businesses we want to see there. And again, throw out that beacon so that folks know to come to us and have conversations about locating in Innsbruck for these kinds of businesses. So what would be the incentive? What would draw people to Innsbruck in a technology zone? State law allows us to reduce fees. You're very familiar with that. We do that in gym zones, which you just uh, created uh, last fall. So reduction in building permit fees or a waiver of those fees, planning fees. You can reduce BPAL taxes. That's specifically allowed in state law. Now, we, we, we're not very reliant on BPAL taxes. There's always discussion of eliminating BPAL taxes. And we already have a total exemption of $500,000 for every business, which is pretty hefty. So that may not be quite the incentive. So I really think, and staff, I think it would concur, the rest of staff would concur that it's that third point. It's your partnership with the EDA, it's your partnership with the Economic Development, Development Authority that's so powerful. That would be what we want to really emphasize in a tech zone, is we want to put out the zone, put out some very basic incentives, right, that are just baked into the ordinance, but then say, come to us, have discussions. We can work with the EDA on specific incentives uh, to create win, win, win between the business, the EDA, the county, and the Innsbruck community as a whole. Now, location and duration would have to be specified in any ordinance. We know it can't be countywide. You'd have to choose discrete areas. We're offering Innsbruck as a place where we, we really think it's a great fit, but there could be others. We look for your feedback on that. Uh, we want to look at where will the incentives have the greatest impact, a white tech zone versus a hip zone or some other kind of zone. Uh, and then we we always want some kind of sunset provision. I think there's this uh, issue that some of these zones can get stale. They're no longer meeting the need. They're just on the books and they, they, they're not refreshed frequently enough. So we'd be looking at a five or 10 year duration as a recommendation on a zone like this. And you could always revisit it. You could always re-up it if it proves to be a good idea or tweak it if we need to turn the knobs in different directions. So I've hustled through uh, the overview of what a tech zone is, why we think it's the right vision for Innsbruck at this time. And I would offer to you, if the board were interested, we can come back with a more detailed proposal specific to Innsbruck and any other area you'd like to see in the March, April timeframe. Have a question? Yeah. <laughs> um, how large an area would you be considering if it were a technology zone? Just talked about acreage, you know, but. I know Innsbruck to me is, as you said, it's, it's, it's delineated and it's a lot of space. So if you were, you said there may be other areas, how much space are you thinking? Well, it's really, where is it a good fit? And we know we can't go countywide, so we'd be looking at a specific business area or a place in need of redevelopment where the label technology zone or the specific qualification of the technology zone would make sense. And we can customize it. So if we if you have another area in mind, for instance, big or small, whatever it happens to be, it wouldn't have to have the same qualifications as Innsbruck. We could target different businesses in different areas. Uh, so it's a fairly flexible tool. But to your question, um, there is no minimum acreage required by state law, and the only maximum we can't do is doing it countywide. We can't do it. So you can do anything in between. Thank you. Well, thank you. Any questions, members of the board? Uh, Anthony, does the sunset clause uh, businesses understand it, right? They, they, they don't get scared off by it, right? So they look and they go, well, what about six years? You can change it on me? Is that how it works? No, sir. Because of the county's track record, that, that just isn't a concern. Yeah, it should be. I was just curious how they looked at it. Is it normal? It is normal. Yes, the sunset clause is normal and is typical for, for technology zones across Virginia. But I, what I will tell you is with the track record of the board, the track record of the county, our businesses know that they can take what you say to the bank. It's, it's, it's just, it would be an issue in other localities, no doubt. It's not an issue here. I'm not facing it here. I love the idea. Uh, and I never really considered it until Andrew mentioned it, but I love the idea. From a business owner's perspective, you're right. I would trust the, the locality. So I'll make sure it doesn't impact what you're trying to do. 
and I, I just to add to that, my sunset provision that I had in mind was you can get into the program up to year five, up to year 10, but the incentives would stick to anyone who qualifies for whatever specified period of time you'd like to do. You would have a 10 year incentive package, even if you get in just before the sunset. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, in turn, uh, Mr. Schmidt, the other advantage to a sunset is that it, it does help move things along. Yes. If folks know that there is some yep. some end to the potential uh, opportunity. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Quick question. Um, and this may be um, for uh, Romanella. A um, couple of times you, you said, well, you guys, you are a newbie. Or maybe newbie, because you don't want to board up technology zone. Um, you mentioned and if there are other areas. So I'm assuming that you know staff must must have talked about some other areas. And maybe you're waiting for us to bring up. No. So oh, okay. um we did, quite frankly. What we looked at was when we were looking at you know the the spec building. We focused on White Oak, and with this, we were looking at, quite frankly, with um, Innsbruck, and this may have been my oversight, the uh, preponderance of multifamily coming in. And right now, you have a square mile that has 30,000 jobs, and the concern is the buildings in Innsbruck are getting older, and what happens to those jobs if there's leakage? So that was the only only thought that that was put forward as far as location. But well, the only reason I brought that up was I was like, well, maybe you guys are thinking about some places. Nothing. I, when, let me say another thing. I can't figure out a place in my district right now that this would make sense. But I was like, maybe you guys need to think of somewhere else. No, but Mr. Newby, adding a technology zone is literally an action of the board, right? So if there was a second one? Correct. We'd come back and enact a new ordinance. It's a, a fairly quick process as long as we know where we want to go and what kind of qualifications we'd like to put in place. Um, because I, I mentioned staff has been kicking this around for a dozen <laughs> years. We weren't holding out on you. We don't have a, a, a second site directly. Yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, I wasn't thinking that you had a second. I was thinking maybe you had a second, third, fourth, fifth. Six type thing. I have some more problems. So you were thinking of Innsbruck because there's there's a whole lot of um, apartment development or condo development well, what in that general area, so that this would be a good clean business to promote in Innsbruck. Yes, ma'am. That um, the primary specific. consideration was before we saw the multifamily development, we saw the buildings getting older. Yeah. Many conversations. I know Mr. Brandon's been involved in with the development community about what are we going to do with these buildings? And so how do you get investment in there? By going through the EDA, you have the flexibility of basically tailoring an agreement per company. So it's pretty wide open. And so the focus was how do you keep 30,000 jobs and how do you strengthen, you know, that commercial? Because the GDP, you know, we talk about county GDP. You've run some numbers on Innsbruck. I mean, what is the value of Innsbruck to this county? It's about three billion, and our, our gross county product is a little bit over twenty-five billion. It's a big number. No, I get that part, but um, you did include the thought that there are so many multifamily. Um, yes, ma'am. That's that's what I was thinking. <clears throat> I agree with that. I've been wondering where all these people are going to work. <laughs> So I see this is to me this that's what makes this appealing you know, because they are good clean jobs. So. Anyway, uh, Mr. Brandon, you had another yeah, question. Yeah, I um, and this this may be, Mr. Manager, you may want to put this into a, a different. But when I, Mr. Romanelli, this you can probably answer to this. When we looked at when I was going through and highlighting and writing my comments as I do and scribble on 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 the different things that we're going to be going over, so I didn't forget. My notes are nowhere near as near as as nice as Mr. Schmidt's. 
beautiful penmanship. <laughs> um, the 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 new overlay district we just put in uh, is called a what is it a hip hip overlay district improvement permit and I immediately started talking up that and and trying to entice people literally from Willow Lawn to to Pemberton you know this is something that's and and the aspect of residential is excluded from that, which is what ends up tying because people want to put commercial and residential together. And I mean, we have a lot of rundown and decaying shopping centers and so forth on that corridor of Broad Street. Is this a tool to move that forward? Because what I had said when I was reading R and D and technology zones and all that. Uh, how do we implement commercial and residential to do redevelopment? Because redevelopment is key. We all know redevelopment is key for survival of, of the county. How do we put those two together? And what, I was excited about the, and I even called you and said, I, I've, I've got two or three on the hook. And, and then it went away because they're, they, there's no residential aspect in that. So in this new technology, is is it just straight office technology commercial, or or is can there be an aspect of residential in it? Well, as, as we've proposed it, sir, we we've, we are targeting uh, the. These sectors, so it was as proposed. It's intended to be commercial, but uh, you know, that's a policy. Your question is a policy question uh, for the board of supervisors in terms of uh, what you'd like to include within the zone. And I'd have to turn to Mr. Newby with respect to the residential question. I know on the on the hip, it's by state rec. You can't. So on this, and and, and we may not even want to touch residential with this. I, I I'm good with that. But I think we need a tool if we are going to do a lot of renewal and redevelopment that you, you, we've got to work some percentage of residential to book or anchor that development in for redevelopment. It's my opinion. So this is where Anthony, I think. Uh, Think of Kinsale in Westwood. And so there's a there's a danger in subsidizing quote unquote residential, but you can subsidize residential by doing some things. There's a parking deck. You want to speak to Kinsale and that whole deal, and you have a corporate headquarters next to an apartment building with a parking deck. And, and structured parking on a postage stamp. And so, how did, how did and that was, and the county accomplished that through an EDA agreement where taxes are being reimbursed over a period of time. And, and, and without that agreement, without the additional uh, support that the county provided, you would have had that same development, but it would have been on three to four times the amount of land mass. And so, as we're trying to densify in Innsbruck, as we're trying to densify in Westwood and elsewhere in the county, those kinds of custom agreements give us. The opportunity. So I think Mr. Bannon, and perhaps this is where the county manager is suggesting is that yes, the technology zone is another tool, and, and we'd love to have that in our toolbox, and it will help us um, advance the the economics of of the county. That doesn't preclude us on a case by case basis for for a customized economic development agreement on a mixed use uh, proposal, uh, perhaps. And, and I also would mention with the. Uh, Amendments that the board approved last year in 2021 on the commercial tax rehab credit program uh, that was also um, structured so that in a multi in a mixed use development that the tax credits would apply to the, uh, the commercial component of it, but it wouldn't preclude any kind of mixed use development because we're seeing more and more of that in the county. Well, I in re in reading this before today's meeting, I did have a. All right, I just want to be um, reminded of the EDA and the CDA um, structures, and I'm not asking you to go over it right now. If you could just 
send me a paper because I, I, I've been asked this question and it suddenly dawned on me, EDA, CDA, and how this will fit in with this. I think that's what you're getting at. You know, what we can do, Ms. O'Bannon, is um, you can bring uh, Anthony and Sheila Miner forward for a work session. Okay. Just to okay. touch on, you know, the EDA agreements that we have in place. Exactly. So we'd be happy to do that. Because we, we have, we've had several of those, and they did involve, like, um, So the typical the typical EDA agreement um, will basically defer some sort of tax, yes. and and we'll defer it for a number of years. Three to five is typical, and then there are other other agreements where we go in and we will actually make an allocation of funding for. So it, it goes from A to Z, but but ours are pretty yeah, pretty simple, if you will. And we can share all of that with the board because we have a number of agreements that are in place. And how that fits in with something like this. I, I took this as simple and odd and, and different. But it looks to me like what, what Mr. Brandon just said, he's trying to work in some sort of residential. Sure. So that would be a CDA or an EDA. It would be, it would be done through an EDA agreement. Mm -hmm. Your CDA um, right now the way that uh, uh, most CDAs have been done, they have excluded residential. But Green City, you know, that'll be a CDA. You're looking at a facility, the arena, but the how many units are in Green City? 2,400. Yeah. So there will be residential, obviously, the CDA. Yeah. There's, there's a relationship there, but it's just not direct. Okay, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Take up a few extra minutes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.